take one. All right. Good morning. Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. How's everybody doing today? We hope you're doing well. We're doing well. It's a little rainy here today, but you know, you got to have rain if you're going to have sunshine and flowers, right? That's right. Yep. You got to have valleys to enjoy the mountains. That's true. That's true. If you remember last week, we studied about the ascension. Mm -hmm. The ascension was when Jesus left the disciples and rose into heaven. Mm -hmm. And as he rose into heaven, one of the things that he had reminded that he would send a comforter, and the comforter was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So as Jesus, part of the Godhead, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, when God the Son ascends to heaven, God the Holy Spirit comes to earth. And he is our comforter and our guider. He guides us through life as we turn in our life over to him. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. We're going to talk about the Bible and how it tells us in depth about Jesus and who he is and what he came to earth to accomplish. That's right. So we are taking a little step back. We've seen the whole of God, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And one of the things we're going to discuss about today is how the Bible, the whole Bible, not just the Gospels, not just the New Testament, but the entire whole Bible is actually a book about Jesus. That it, it is full, all the way back to the beginning of the Bible, of clues that help us know Jesus better and help us to walk with him closer. And so, how many people will read the Bible and not be able to put the puzzles together. That's true. We're going to about talk about two disciples. We are. And um, it also helps us to um, learn how to put those puzzle pieces together. And it's not a one it's not a one time deal. You don't read the Bible once. The Bible, as I believe, as Rudy believes, as we believe in our church, is to be read throughout our lives. It isn't a matter of just studying it and you've got it. And so the more you spend with the scriptures, the better you understand the story that God put before us in the beginning, starting in Genesis, about his perfect plan for us and how the scriptures predicted long, long before Jesus walked on earth that he would die so that we could be forgiven for our sins. And it is through the knowledge of the scriptures that we not only begun to recognize Jesus as the Messiah, but also as a friend that we can lean on and that we walk with our whole life long. I think it, today's lesson underscores the need for us today to spend more time in the Word because the more time we spend in the Word, mm -hmm. the better understanding we will have. And God has a lot to share with each one of us. And he shares it on an individual basis. It's not just waving a wand and all of a sudden everybody understands. And we can't just learn about it on Sunday morning. We not only learn about it, but we live it. Right. Could you get us started with prayer? I will certainly do that. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you today. And thank you for this lesson. As we studied last week of your Son ascending into heaven, the Holy Spirit coming to the <clears throat> disciples of Jesus uh, in the day of Pentecost. And today we, we look back at how that happens on an individual basis and how through us studying your word, you talk to us and you lead us into an understanding of who you are, what you want to accomplish in our life, and how you're going to accomplish that. And the amazing thing is, all we have to do is surrender. So guide us today. Give the teachers wisdom. Give our students an open heart and an open mind. And uh, 
let us enjoy studying your word and learning more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we're going to start off in the book of Luke. Chapter 24. And I think we start with verse 13. That's right. Now, behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Now the two, this was two of the disciples, but not of the eleven chosen disciples. These were followers. These were what we call today laymen. And they were, had just, it's only a couple of days since Christ was crucified and he has risen from the dead. They are aware of that, but they don't fully understand it. And we'll see as we go through today's scriptures that it it, it was difficult for them to grasp what was taking place in Jesus' life. And then continuing in verse 14, And they talked together of all the things which had happened. So it was, while they were conversed in reason, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, otherwise they couldn't recognize who Jesus was. So they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then the one whose name was Cleophas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem, and have you not known the things which have happened in these days? And he said to them, What things? And so they said, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and then crucified him. Continuing in verse 21, but we were hoping that he was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things had happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angel who said he was alive. And a certain of those who were with us went to the tomb, found it just as the women had said but they did not see him. Then he said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his own glory? And the beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he was talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them and gathered together, saying, The Lord is reason indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they s told all about the things that happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. So what we see here is that the dis these 
two disciples, or followers of Jesus, had a vague understanding, but they were not able to put the pieces of the puzzle together. They did not fully understand, even though they saw him raise the dead, heal the sick, cure the lame. They saw all these miracles, and they just did not fully comprehend that he was God the Son that he was their heavenly father. And they had, so they were sad. And we see where Julia just read that they really thought they were, he was just going to come and redeem Israel. They did not realize that he was the savior of the world. But he, they were thinking about things of the world and not things of heaven. And yet they also speak about their heart burning while they spoke with him. Their heart warming up and knowing, glowing, that they were in the presence. But they didn't understand what they didn't that, understand. that meant in their heart. They didn't understand. I wonder how oftentimes we are in the presence of Jesus and we don't really fully understand. And that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when you study the Bible or you think deeply on God. <laughs> That's really the Holy Spirit revealing things to us. And it's different for each one of us. It's not the same for every person. But sometimes we think of the disciples as very special people because Jesus chose them to be his friends and his confidence and to follow him so closely very early on. And we these, these passages in the Bibles, we refer to them as Bible stories. But we also believe them to be true. So they're not just a made-up kind of fictional story. It's a historical story. And we hear of people who are just like us. They were walking with Jesus, and they didn't even know it. Yep. And so we're encouraged to study them, to study about what their path looked like, and to study how they walked with Jesus, because they're our example of how we could as well. You know, and once they realize... Jesus was with it after he broke the bread. Now, we, t we call the story the road to Emmaus. Now, Emmaus is good seven, eight miles away. The average person probably walks two, three miles per hour. So it's a long distance. And in the uh, story that we're reading here, they asked Jesus to stay before they knew who he was mm -hmm. for dinner because it was late in the day. Mm -hmm. But once they understood that that was Jesus that had been walking with them and sharing scripture with them, they were full of energy and they went back to Jerusalem, which means they probably didn't get there until 2, 3 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. But they were excited. They were on fire for Jesus. They were. They were. All right. It's time for some questions. We'll see how much you've retained today. <laughs> okay. Where were the disciples going? They were going to Santa Cruz. No. All right. Santa. They were going to Amanus. However, that's quite a distance and they were walking. So... It would be, it would, it, it, the estimates are that it's about seven miles. So if you think of yourself being at Happy Taco in Half Moon Bay and walking up over the hill on the other side of the hill and down the freeway a little bit into San Mateo, that's about the distance. Yeah. That's a long distance. And there's no reason to expect that what they walked was any easier than that walking would be. They maybe didn't have the great big hill. They maybe didn't have the beautiful redwoods, but it's still a very long walk. And they didn't have as great of shoes as we have. Probably. They just had leather sandals. That's true. And probably got a lot of sand in their feet. They, they may well have. All right. Uh, question number two. Who joined the disciples on their journey? Well, they came to realize that it was Jesus who joined them on their journey. But think about, have you ever seen somebody that you couldn't? You know you've seen them before, you've met them before, you maybe even remember talking to them, but you can't remember where or who they are or any. 
that would be kind of like what the disciples were feeling. They just didn't recognize Jesus on any level. They felt like they were walking with a perfect stranger. And Jesus didn't get angry no. or upset. His feelings no. didn't get hurt. No. He compassionately shared with them the scriptures pertaining to him. And, uh, you know, that's the wonderful thing about Jesus. No matter how many times we fail him, if we ask for his forgiveness and we look to him, he is going to lift us up and say, I love you. Yeah. All right. Question number three. He showed them, oh, excuse me, I've given you the answer again. How did Jesus respond to this disciple's explanation of recent events that they were talking about? Well, they did just what we started talking about when we opened up the lesson. He showed them the scriptures, and he showed himself in the scriptures. And he was referring to scriptures that were thousands of years old. And these people that he was walking with and the disciples they were people who were probably familiar with at least some of the scriptures. Sure. And he was referring to the scriptures they'd studied that had the pieces of the puzzle there, always there, but they didn't recognize them, and they didn't know how to put them together until Jesus explained it to them on the way to Emmaus. That's where we're really fortunate today, because we have the complete Bible. We do. Now, when they... when we refer to the scriptures <clears throat> at this time in history, we're talking about the Old Testament. And they probably didn't have the complete Old Testament to view, but they had parts of it. Mm -hmm. So today we have the completed Bible mm -hmm. from beginning to end. So we have the ability that these people did not have to study God's word and, and truly, if we open our hearts, we'll get a much clearer picture of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All right, on to question number five. Uh, four, excuse me. Who did the disciples invite for dinner? Jesus. Jesus. They, they didn't know Jesus. It. They invited Jesus for dinner. They didn't know it. At the time, probably, but they invited Jesus. Imagine being able to do that and think about what it might have been like for them who were walking next to him, even if they didn't know who he was. He had all this knowledge about scripture. He had all this understanding of the events that had taken place. And he was probably pretty easy to talk to and to be around. And this conversation that they had with a stranger, they thought he was a stranger. Yeah. It was a life-changing moment for them. And then, uh, when did the disciples finally recognize that the man was Jesus? After Jesus handed the disciples the bread. Remember the Last Supper where they broke bread together. And prayed with them. And prayed with them. So most of this, this chapter that we're studying about, most of this story, Jesus is just like a, a, a good guy. He's a likable guy who's really very knowledgeable. He knows an awful lot about the scriptures. And they, they didn't know that they had the Savior, our Savior, in their house. And he took the time to walk with them as he takes the time to walk with us. And to help them understand the scriptures and to break bread with them. They invited Jesus to dinner and he came. That's pretty, pretty amazing. And when he prayed, their eye, the scales just kind of fell off their eyes and they knew who he was. We call that kind of an aha moment. You know, when you, when you finally get something, where something that somebody's been trying to explain to you or you've been trying to learn and all of a sudden, ah, aha, I get it. They had like an amazing aha moment. Yeah, that's probably the biggest one in history. Yeah, so... All right, what did seeing Jesus confirm for the two disciples? It confirmed for them that Jesus was alive 
and that he was the Messiah, the Savior that he, they had been waiting for, and that we can get to know him through prayer, which helps us to develop a relationship with him. We can learn more about him, about his nature, about what he's like, and we can learn about his love by reading the Bible, the scriptures. So just to keep the time frame correct, this is only a few days after his death resurrection. He spends another approximately 40 days on the earth and he is witnessed by hundreds of people. So this, is, this event that we just read about takes place before the ascension, mm -hmm. which we studied last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use the Ascension and the Pentecost. Those are, those are some very important events that have a lot of impact on, on, on many other events that we will study, that we, we study often. And this one in particular, where we have two people actually getting it and hearing that story and that account, we can see the Holy Spirit working in their life. They didn't know it at the time, but we can see all of the miraculous events are surrounding both Jesus' death as well as his resurrection and then following this event, the, the Ascension. So we ask you to stay with us for the next few weeks because yep. over the next month or so we're going to be studying more in the New Testament about events following the death and resurrection of Christ and how the Holy Spirit, that's God, the Holy Spirit, impacts lives on an individual basis and what marvelous and wonderful things can occur when you turn your life over to Jesus. So stay tuned. We think we have some uh, exciting lessons coming up and we hope you enjoy. And we hope that some of those lessons will continue to be online. We also hope that some of those lessons are going to return to the classroom. So stay tuned for that too. And let's yeah. pray about that now, please. Can we? You're going to lead us in okay. So, dear Heavenly Father, we're so excited about this lesson because it's about two ordinary people who didn't always know you, didn't always recognize you, and, and then they did. And they show us that that's possible for us too. And so we ask you to take that possibility, have us dive into thinking about you, into praying to you, into studying your scriptures. And we ask this, Lord, so that we can come closer to you, but also that we can be in this world and help this, this very, very sad world that has so many problems in it. We ask you to help us walk close to you, to know you, so that we can go out and share your love and share your light and, and share your life with the people that are around us. And we ask you to study hard so that we can do that well. And we do all of that with praise and with prayer to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we say, Amen. Amen. It was good to see you. We're looking forward to seeing you in your, you're all going to have more, you're all going to be taller than you used to be. I know you are, but I'm so excited to see that. All right. We'll see you soon.